Today, I'm going to be walking you through step by step how to set up your iPad for a child. Let's jump in. So the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that your iPad is connected to Wi-Fi. So to do that, we just pull down at the top right hand corner of the screen and you'll see a little menu that'll pop up here and you see the little Wi-Fi triangle there to connect to Wi-Fi. And then you just want to press and hold on that. It'll give you some Wi-Fi options. Press on that. Click on your Wi-Fi connection and enter your password. If you don't see your Wi-Fi signal there, then you want to go to Wi-Fi settings. And here, this will have any of the networks that it can detect in the area that you could sign into, okay? The next step is you want to set up a separate Apple ID for your child. So what we're going to do is over on the left-hand side, you see it has my name there, but then below it, it has family. So this is going to be part of your family account. So we want to click on family. We already have a couple of members in there. And now what we want to do is up in the type right right-hand corner, you want to click on add member. It'll bring up another box here and it'll have some suggestions of people that are kind of in your network if you want any of those. But what we want to do is we want to create a child account. So you click on that and then you just enter your child's name and birth dates. So I'm just going to make one up here. We have Bruce Wayne, add the birth date. Okay, and then it's going to pop up with this box here to say parental consent to provide consent to create this child account. Continue with Touch ID. So this way, you're the only one that can create this account. So we're going to go continue with Touch ID. And then we're just going to touch our ID there to approve. And then it has the family privacy disclosure. You can read through that and click Agree. And then it has the terms and conditions. Again, read through that, click Agree. So then it's going to pop up with a suggestion to, to use the iCloud email. You can do that, or you can add a new one or change that or whatever you want. We're just going to use what they give us. So we're going to click on Continue. And then it's going to ask you to create that email. And then from here, we just need to uh, enter a password. Once you add your password, then it's going to ask you to use a phone number to verify the account. I always recommend, even if your child has a phone, use your own phone number. Again, just as an extra layer of security so that you know anytime that somebody is trying to sign in on your child's account. Okay, so we're going to just use my number. And then here, there are several parental controls that you want to activate. So we're going to click continue. And then here it is asking you to use a lock code anytime that something is being changed on your child's account. This is something that you yourself should have possession of and know what this code is so that nobody else can change things on your child's account. Okay. So we're just going to add in a passcode here. That's going to ask you to verify. This is up to you, but I always recommend turning on sharing location so that not only will you know where your child is using this device, but also if the device is left behind somewhere, you can be able to find that. So we're going to click share location. And then they have here, like my wife is coming up here that I can also add her as a parent or guardian to this. So we're going to toggle that on and then click done. And now you can see we have our fictitious child added to our family account. And if you click on this arrow, this will show you a lot of those key features that we just selected. It shows you screen time usage, subscriptions, purchases, all of that right in this screen so that you can monitor it. So next, what we're going to do is from here, we're going to go into this screen time. We're going to click on that. The couple of things that I like to do here is go under downtime. We can click on that. And again, because we're changing something, it's going to ask you for this passcode. And so we're going to set every day, we're going to have downtime from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. We're going to click on that. I'm going to change that to 8 p.m. until, let's say, 3 p.m. when they get out of school. Okay, so we click done. So now it will not allow usage on that iPad during that time. Now, this may be different for you, or you could even change it to customize days. So let's say we want to go custom days, and on the weekends, we want it to be more. And we could go 9 p.m. until, you know, we'll keep that at 3 p.m. done. You could dial this out exactly how you want that to be, okay? So that's scheduled. So we're going to back out of that. And then right below that, you have app limits. So you could even go in and add limits to specific apps if you want to do that. And then the other one I like to do is communication limitations. So we're going to click on that. And this, you could go in like, so allow during screen time to click on that and go contacts only. So that means they can only talk to people that are in their contacts during screen time, okay? Then during downtime, we leave that on contacts only. You could even go to specific contacts, so maybe that's just mom and dad or grandma and grandpa, things like that. The other one is content privacy restrictions, so we're gonna go into there. 
And here is where you can allow purchases. So we go, don't allow to delete apps, installing apps. I'm gonna say don't allow, and in-app purchases, don't allow. So that means that my child's gonna to have to come to me if they wanna make any purchases or be able to download or delete any apps that I'm, I'm in control of, of where that needs to happen. So again, your case is gonna be different depending on what you want your child to be able to do or not do. You can kind of dial this in and you can always change it. If you're having issues and they're using it too much or they're contact people they shouldn't be, you know, all that sort of thing, you can dial that in right from this screen here. So we're back out of that. And then next, we wanna go right below that to where it says ask to buy. I'm gonna click on that and make sure that that is toggled on. Anytime that they have to download something or purchase something, they have to get your approval. Okay, back out of that. And then next, we're gonna go down to where it says restrictions. We're gonna open that up. And where it says share my location under privacy, click on allow, and I would say don't allow. Again, it's gonna ask you for your pin code. And that way, any apps or anything like that, you just automatically are not allowing that to receive data from your child about where they're at. And then if you really want to kind of nail this down for protection, you can go into allowed apps and features up towards the top, click on that. And these are elements that you could turn on or off. If you have a younger child that's only supposed to be using certain apps on the phone, and you just want to eliminate their, their web access in general, you could go up to Safari and toggle that off. You can also turn off FaceTime or SharePlay camera. You have a, a couple of different options within there. Okay, so we'll set that to that. And then we also have Intelligence and Siri. This is one that is, again, sort of up to you. You can, you know, allow how much they're able to use and utilize Siri. Again, some of the older kids are kind of learning how to work around some of the limitations by going through Siri. So you can limit that there. And we're gonna back out of that and back out of that. And now I would just recommend that you make it as just a normal practice to kind of, you could see the screen time, see what apps they're using. They're getting in, into apps or using apps that they shouldn't be, or you, that you just don't want them to. You can then see that in the usage report and then go in there and toggle that app off specifically or limit the, the, the usage of that as you see fit. Now back out of the family. Now, once you have that all set up, the next step that you need to do is just go into your account here up at the top and you're gonna sign out of your account and sign into your child's account. So we're gonna just scroll down to the bottom where it says sign out. It's gonna ask you to enter your password to sign out. If you're planning on signing back in, you just wanna toggle all those on, sign out. The next step is going to remove your data from this iPad so that you can hand it over to your child. So once you do this, uh, you're gonna click sign out. It's gonna empty the iPad and then you just sign in with your child's account and now this iPad is ready for them to use and you have complete control over what they can add and not add and purchase and when they can use the iPad. I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you in the next one.